Jacques Maurissin was a French Catholic philosopher. Raised as a Protestant, he became an agnostic before converting to Catholicism in 1906. An author of more than 60 books, he helped to revive Street. Thomas Aquinas for modern times, and was influential in the development and drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Pope Paul VI presented his message to men of thought and of science at the close of Vatican II to Maritain, his longtime friend and mentor. Maritain's interest in works spanned many aspects of philosophy, including aesthetics, political theory, philosophy of science, metaphysics, the nature of education, liturgy and ecclesiology, life. Maritain was born in Paris, the son of Paul Maritain, who was a lawyer, and his wife Genevieve Favor, the daughter of Jules Favor, and was reared in a liberal Protestant milieu. He was sent to the Lycée Henry IV. Later, he attended the Sorbonne, studying the natural sciences, chemistry, biology and physics. At the Sorbonne, he met Rosier Umankov, a Russian Jewish emigre. They married in 1904. A noted poet and mystic, she participated as his intellectual partner in his search for truth. Race's sister, Vera Irumankov, lived with Jacques and Racer for almost all their married life. At the Sorbonne, Jacques and Racer soon became disenchanted with scientism, which could not, in their view, address the larger existential issues of life. In 1901, in light of this disillusionment, they made a pact to commit suicide together if they could not discover some deeper meaning to life within a year. They were spared from following through on this because, at the urging of Charles Pegay, they attended the lectures of Henri Bergson at the Collège de France. Bergson's critique of scientism dissolved their intellectual despair and instilled in them the sense of the absolute, then. Through the influence of Elia Cuto and Bloy, they converted to the Roman Catholic faith in 1906. In the fall of 1907 the Maritans moved to Heidelberg, where Jacques studied biology under Hans Dreisch. Hans Dreisch's theory of neo-vitalism attracted Jacques because of its affinity with Henry Bergson. During this time, Racer fell ill, and during her convalescence, their spiritual advisor, a Dominican friar named Fr. Humbert Clarisic, introduced her to the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas. She read them with enthusiasm and, in turn, exhorted her husband to examine the saint's writings. In Thomas, Maritain found a number of insights and ideas that he had believed all along. He wrote, Thenceforth, in affirming to myself, without chicanery or diminution, the authentic value of the reality of our human instruments of knowledge, I was already eight Thomas without knowing it, when several months later I came to the Summa Theologiae. I would construct no impediment to its luminous flood. From the angelic doctor, he was led to the philosopher as Saint Thomas called Aristotle. Still later, to further his intellectual development, he read the Neo-Scholastics. Beginning in 1912, Maritain taught at the College Stanislas. He later moved to the Institut Catholique de Paris. For the 1916-1917 academic year, he taught of the Petit Seminaire de Versailles. In 1933, he gave his first lectures in North America in Toronto at the Pontifical Institute of Medieval Studies. He also taught at Columbia University, at the Committee on Social Thought, University of Chicago, at the University of Notre Dame, and at Princeton University. From 1945 to 1948, he was the French ambassador to the Vatican. Afterwards, he returned to Princeton University where he achieved the Elysian status of a professor emeritus in 1956. Raisa Maritain died in 1960. After her death, Jacques published her journal under the title, Race's Journal. For several years Maritain was an honorary chairman of the Congress for Cultural Freedom, appearing as a keynote speaker at its 1960 conference in Berlin. From 1961, Maritain lived with the Little Brothers of Jesus in Toulouse, France. He had had an influence on the order since its foundation in 1933. He became a little brother in 1970.
Jacques and Ray Samaritan are buried in the cemetery of Kolbsheim, a little French village in Alsace where he had spent many summers at the estate of his friends Antoinette and Alexander Grunelius. A cause for beatification of him and his wife Raisa is being planned. Work. The foundation of Maritain's thought is Aristotle, Saint Thomas and the Thomistic commentators, especially John of Saint Thomas. He is eclectic in his use of these sources. Maritain's philosophy is based on evidence accrued by the senses and acquired by an understanding of first principles. Maritain defended philosophy as a science against those who would degrade it and promoted philosophy as the queen of sciences. In 1910, Jacques Maritain completed his first contribution to modern philosophy, a 28-page article titled Reason and Modern Science, published in Revue de Philosophie. In it, he warned that science was becoming a divinity, its methodology usurping the role of reason and philosophy. Science was supplanting the humanities in importance. In 1917, a committee of French bishops commissioned Jacques to write a series of textbooks to be used in Catholic colleges and seminaries. He wrote and completed only one of these projects, titled Elements de Philosophie in 1920. It has been a standard text ever since in many Catholic seminaries. He wrote in his introduction, If the philosophy of Aristotle, as revived and enriched by Saint Thomas and his school, may rightly be called the Christian philosophy, both because the Church is never weary of putting it forward as the only true philosophy and because it harmonizes perfectly with the truths of faith. Nevertheless, it is proposed here for the reader's acceptance not because it is Christian, but because it is demonstrably true. This agreement between a philosophic system founded by a pagan and the dogmas of revelation is no doubt an external sign, an extra philosophic guarantee of its truth, but from its own rational evidence, that it derives its authority as a philosophy. During World War II, Jacques Maritain protested the policies of the Vichy government while teaching at the Pontifical Institute for Medieval Studies in Canada. Moving to New York, Maritain became deeply involved in rescue activities, seeking to bring persecuted and threatened academics, many of them Jews, to America. He was instrumental in founding the École Libre des Hautes Etudes, a kind of university in exile that was, at the same time, the center of Gaullist resistance in the United States. After the war, he tried unsuccessfully to have the Pope speak on the issue of anti-Semitism and the evils of the Holocaust. Many of his American papers are held by the University of Notre Dame, which established the Jacques Maritain Center in 1957. The Circle de Tudes Jacques and Raisa Maritain is an association founded by the philosopher himself in 1962 in Kolbsheim, where the couple is also buried. The purpose of these centers is to encourage study and research of Maritain's thought and expand upon them. It is also absorbed in translating and editing his writings, metaphysics and epistemology. Maritain's philosophy is based on the view that metaphysics is prior to epistemology, being is first apprehended implicitly in sense experience, and is known in two ways. First being is known reflexively by abstraction from sense experience. One experiences a particular being, e.g., a cup, a dog, etc., and through reflection on the judgment, e.g., this is a dog, one recognizes that the object in question is an existent. Second, in light of attaining being reflexively through apprehension of sense experience one may arrive at what Maritain calls an intuition of being. For Maritain this is the point of departure for metaphysics. Without the intuition of being one cannot be a metaphysician at all. The intuition of being involves rising to the apprehension of ens secundum quod est ens. In existence and the existent he explains, it is being attained or perceived at the summit of an abstractive intellection, of an eidetic or intensive visualization which shows its purity and power of illumination only to the fact that the intellect one day was stirred to its depths and transilluminated by the impact of the act of existing apprehended in things and because it was quickened to the point of receiving this act, or hearkening to it within itself.
in the intelligible and super-intelligible integrity of the tone particular to it, in view of this priority given to metaphysics. Maritain advocates an epistemology he calls critical realism. Maritain's epistemology is not critical in Kant's sense, which held that one could only know anything after undertaking a thorough critique of one's cognitive abilities. Rather, it is critical in the sense that it is not a naive or non-philosophical realism, but one that is defended by way of reason. Against Kant's critical project Maritain argues that epistemology is reflexive, you can only defend a theory of knowledge in light of knowledge you have already attained. Consequently, the critical question is not the question of modern philosophy, how do we pass from what is perceived to what is. Rather, since the mind, from the very start, reveals itself is warranted in its certitude by things and measured by an essay independent of itself, how are we to judge if, how, on what conditions, and to what extent it is so both in principle and in the various moments of knowledge. In contrast idealism inevitably ends up in contradiction, since it does not recognize the universal scope of the first principles of identity, contradiction, and finality. These become merely laws of thought or language, but not of being, which opens the way to contradictions being instantiated in reality. Maritain's metaphysics ascends from this account of being to a critique of the philosophical aspects of modern science, through analogy to an account of the existence and nature of God as it is known philosophically and through mystical experience. Ethics Maritain was a strong defender of a natural law ethics. He viewed ethical norms as being rooted in human nature. For Maritain the natural law is known primarily, not through philosophical argument and demonstration, but rather through connaturality. Connatural knowledge is a kind of knowledge by acquaintance. We know the natural law through our direct acquaintance with it in our human experience. Of central importance is Maritain's argument that natural rights are rooted in the natural law. This was key to his involvement in the drafting of the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Another important aspect of his ethics was his insistence upon the need for moral philosophy to be conducted in a theological context. While a Christian could engage in speculative thought about nature or metaphysics in a purely rational manner and develop an adequate philosophy of nature of metaphysics, this is not possible with ethics. Moral philosophy must address the actual state of the human person, and this is a person in a state of grace. Thus, moral philosophy adequately considered must take into account properly theological truths. It would be impossible, for instance, to develop an adequate moral philosophy without giving consideration to properly theological facts such as original sin and the supernatural end of the human person in beatitude. Any moral philosophy that does not take into account these realities that are only known through faith would be fundamentally incomplete. Political Theory Maritain advocated what he called integral humanism. He argued that secular forms of humanism were inevitably anti-human in that they refused to recognize the whole person. Once the spiritual dimension of human nature is rejected, we no longer have an integral, but merely partial, humanism, one which rejects a fundamental aspect of the human person. Accordingly, in integral humanism, he explores the prospects for a new Christendom, rooted in his philosophical pluralism, in order to find ways Christianity could inform political discourse and policy in a pluralistic age. In this account he develops a theory of cooperation, to show how people of different intellectual positions can nevertheless cooperate to achieve common practical aims. Maritain's political theory was extremely influential, and was a primary source behind the Christian democratic movement. Maritain also corresponded with, and was a friend of the American radical community organizer Saul Alinsky and French Prime Minister Robert Schuman. Criticism Major criticisms of Maritain have included an over-dependence upon late scholastic commentators at the expense of fidelity to Aquinas' own text. However, Maritain is frequently developing his own thought to address contemporary problems. 
His work is that of a philosopher who makes use of historical sources to develop his own positions rather than that of a historian of philosophy. Fr. Santiago Ramirez argued strongly that Maritain's moral philosophy adequately considered could not be distinguished in any meaningful way from moral theology as such. Tracy Rowland has argued that the lack of a fully developed philosophy of culture in Maritain and others was responsible for an inadequate notion of culture in the documents of Vatican II and thereby for much of the misapplication of the conciliar texts in the life of the Church following the Council. Maritain's political theory has been criticized for a democratic pluralism that appeals to something very similar to the later liberal philosopher John Rawls' conception of an overlapping consensus of reasonable views. It is argued that such a view illegitimately presupposes the necessity of pluralistic conceptions of the human good. Sayings Vae mihi si non Thomas de Zavero, woe to me if I do not Thomas de size. Juren adore Keju, I adore only God. The artist pours out his creative spirit into a work. The philosopher measures his knowing spirit by the real. I do not know if Saul Alinsky knows God, but I assure you that God knows Saul Alinsky. We do not need a truth to serve us, we need a truth that we can serve.